All right, so this is the solution for the problem labeled 1983B2. So right at the bat, hopefully you can see that this is probably going to be some kind of collision problem, but also with a spring. So we got some momentum issues here, and possibly energy, possibly simple harmonic motion. So we, we got a lot of uh, work cut out for us on this one. So we have this uh, collision. We know a few things. Mass 2M is moving at speed VO. We have the other mass, which is just regular M, spring constant K. And we're asked to develop expressions for us a few different things. And the first one is the V of the speed of the block immediately after impact. So what kind of uh, um, topic should we be using here? Well, it's an impact. It's a collision. So hopefully that word uh, shoots off red flares for you, and we're dealing with a collision, so we should be dealing with momentum. We know that the initial momentum has to be equal to the final momentum. So initially, the only thing that we have moving is the uh, 2m block, so we have 2m multiplied by vo. That's the momentum before, and if you notice, they stick to each other, so it's an inelastic collision, so that means we have 2m plus m on the other side, and uh, we're moving at some velocity that we don't know. That's the velocity that we want. So you have to be careful here. Where, What time frame are we talking about? This is immediately after the collision, but before the spring starts to compress. So we are not dealing with the spring just yet. So this right here turns into 3m. So we're going to divide 3m to the other side, and we get a solution that v is equal to, you can see how the m's kind of cancel out, and that's 2 divided by 3 times the initial velocity. And we've seen kind of this before. We have ratios where the velocity turns into smaller velocity, and it's the same ratio as what the masses are to each other in terms of what's moving. 2m was moving. Now we have 3m moving, so we get 2 thirds of the initial velocity. Okay, so not, not too bad. So now we're going to deal with this x, the maximum distance the x is compressed. Well, from here... We know that uh, we basically have no potential energy in the spring. And then all of a sudden we do have potential energy because uh, we're compressing the spring. So us equals zero, us equals something. And we don't know exactly what it is. It's one half k x squared, right? Uh, so what, what's going on here? Well, where we get this potential energy from? Well, it came from the kinetic energy of the two blocks that were moving ahead. So initially, before the spring starts to compress, we have kinetic energy, which is, of course, mechanical, which turns into elastic potential energy, which, of course, is mechanical. So that means our kinetic energy, 1 half times 3m, because that's what's moving, multiplied by the velocity, which was 2 thirds vo squared, right? one half mass times velocity squared is our kinetic energy. Our mass is totally 3m. Our velocity was 2 thirds vo. Why do we have to do this? Because it says we can only make things in terms of our known quantities of m, k, and vo. It has to be equal to one half kx squared. Now x is what we're looking for, the maximum compression of this thing. So, all right, now it's gonna be kind of a brute force thing. This one half turns out, uh, cancels out with that one half. We have a squared here, so um, we have 3m multiplied by 4 over 9 vo squared equals kx squared. Okay, so this 3 makes that 9 a 3. So uh, what are we left with? We're left, and we're probably going to have to divide by k, right? Divide by k. So uh, you have to, I'll be flipping back and forth for a second. What do we have left? We have 4m vo squared, right? 4m vo squared over 3k, right? Because we have the 3 from that and we have the k from that, and that equals x squared. Well, we can't really leave it as x squared, so we'll have to do the square root of it. So x is the square root of 4m vo squared over 3k. Okay, so that was just brute force. You know, uh, most of your points would be coming from the fact that you realize that k has to equal us, and the rest of it is just our algebra. All right, so now we're going to deal with part C, the period. 
Well, we know this is simple harmonic motion. We know it's a mass moving on a spring, so it's 2 pi times the square root of m over k. k is a known quantity. We can use k. What's the, the mass that's moving? Well, if they stick to each other, then the mass that's moving is actually 3m. So this one's actually pretty easy. It's 2 pi times the square root of 3m over k. And that's fine, because pi is a fundamental constant. We can use m. We can use k. 3. We're good. And there we go. That's the period of our simple harmonic motion. See, wasn't that too, not too bad. All right.